every one of us has grown up during this unique historical period when we've had easy access to, to cheap energy and all of the things that cheap energy can do for us. We are almost absolutely, totally dependent on oil for all of our activities. First of all, industry, of course, runs on oil. Everyone understands that. Agriculture, modern mechanised agriculture to feed the world uh, is heavily dependent on oil. Uh, if you look at transportation, uh, again, it's obvious cars and planes uh, run on oil, petroleum, gasoline. Uh, and of course, military capability. You cannot fight a war, as the Americans know, without oil. Uh, so every aspect of human existence uh, is dependent on oil. And when we reach that point, when we get to maximum production, uh, maximum supply capacity relative to demand, uh, that is a very significant point, which uh, many people think, including me, is without precedent in human history. Global oil production will peak. Everything will change as a consequence. And yet people won't be talking about the oil peak. They'll talking, be talking about the unemployment figures. They'll be talking about the high price of food. And they will have completely lost sight of the one event that caused all of those effects. The evidence for peak oil is absolutely overwhelming. Uh, first of all, we're discovering uh, less and less new oil fields. Um, virtually four-fifths of the oil that we're now consuming comes from fields discovered before 1970. The opportunity uh, to find new oil uh, becomes limited to smaller and smaller pockets which are more difficult to extract and more costly. We are now consuming each year three times more than the oil, extra oil that we're discovering and that gap is, is widening. There's something like 53 countries now are physically producing less today than they have at some point in the, in the historical past. I mean, that's fact, that's not interpretation or anything. Of course, you could, if it's just reached peak, you say, may say that's an anomaly, it may, may be able to do a little bit better next year, but by and large, most countries are either past peak or going over it. Britain, for example, peaked in 1999. Norway has also now gone over the top, as the Norwegian government uh, uh, confirms, and, and it's falling fast, about 6% a year. So that means the, the world is pretty much close to peak of ordinary conventional oil. Then there's another surge of this deep water oil, the last frontier, so to speak, there's a little surge of that coming in probably. And then of course there's the heavy oils of Canada and Venezuela that come in as a huge resource. There's no shortage of it, but the extraction rate is extremely slow and, and expensive. So if you put the whole thing together, I think we have a peak around 210. And the real impact of all of that, which is beginning to be realized, is not the peak itself, but the vision of the long decline that follows peak. And that's a relentless, remorseless decline that goes on forever at 2 or 3% a year. It's not individually very much, but that eats into our, 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 our supply very seriously and, and ever worse. We expend about 10 calories of fossil fuel energy for every calorie of food energy that we produce. Now this would have been impossible in any earlier historical time before we had access to cheap oil. If, if we had been uh, expending more energy to grow food in the medieval era than the food gave us, we would starve. It's only because of this, this one time only gift from nature of fossil fuels that were created over millions of years and stored up and that we have been drawing down over the course of just a couple of hundred years that we're able to run these energy deficits in our food system. So we're enormously exposed in that area and, uh, and, and peak oil could in fact mean uh, widespread hunger and even famine on a global scale if we don't prepare for it and begin to transform our global food system to one that is not so dependent on fossil fuels.
As the economy grows, we nearly always transport more stuff. People drive to more places, they fly to more places, more tourism, more everything. More food comes from far distant places. We're basically moving more molecules faster to more places in greater quantity. And all of this moving of molecules takes a great deal of energy, and most of that energy is oil. The implication of peak oil is that oil prices are going to become more volatile and that the average price of oil is going to remain structurally higher than it has in decades. What happens if, especially your key energy feedstock, which is oil, what happens if that goes into decline? And it seems to many of us analyzing this that it's uh, unavoidable, the conclusion is unavoidable, that economic contraction will be the result of this. Um, I've not seen any convincing evidence that that, that will not be so. The economy is really kept afloat by the confidence of investors and consumers that uh, economic growth is going to continue. If there's a widespread perception that the economy is going to contract, people will stop taking out new loans. People will stop buying new houses. Investors will stop uh, in investing. And the consequence of that is that the economy will begin to shrink. That means there will be foreclosures, and when that happens, money effectively starts to disappear from the economy. The decline itself is not really a serious uh, crisis, but as the financial community wakes up that the growth is no longer possible, and this decline has not only started, but it's going on, it's not just a little downturn, it's a beginning of a new a age, that this could cause quite a shock. I mean, it could cause resource wars for people to try and get access to what is left. It could, I think personally, it probably heralds the second Great Depression that somehow they've got to wipe out just mountains of capital.